Hello! I am so incredibly excited because there is a huge announcement. Not sure if you just saw the post, but I am coming on live with the other person in that post, which is Nikki Snow. And we have a huge announcement that we are chosen as the Oxygen Challenge number six. So that means her and I have created a program, both separately, a whole 90 day program for Oxygen Magazine. And you have the opportunity to join both of us or each of us, one or, one or the other or both. And we have a special code for you guys. I have something in my teeth. Oh, I do. Thanks. I love that. <laughs> Just got done eating with Dom. Um, so let's see if she's okay. She's requesting. So let me bring her on. It's so exciting. We shot together. We couldn't say anything, <laughs> which was, <laughs> but she's coming on right now. And we'll talk about our whole 90 day programs, what it is, who it's for, what equipment you need, what prizes there are. Hi. Hello. Hi, Jen. Hi, everybody. Hi. How are Hello. you? Oh, I am so excited to be here and so excited to share this with you yeah. and with everybody. I was already feeling the love like when it launched on Instagram and on social media and there's such a cool community already mm -hmm. being built. So yeah, I could tell you were feeling that and I am absolutely thrilled to be here and thank you for allowing me to jump on to your platform to be able to promote this together so I'm super yeah excited. <laughs> I know it's so funny because yes we're like both created separate programs but if you guys see some of the photos we took together it's pretty badass <laughs> it is really great <laughs> um okay so Tell everyone who you are, and then I'll go through a little background of who I am, just for if people are joining from your channel as well. Yeah, that would be great. So my name, hello everybody, my name is Nikki Snow. I live in Chicago. I've been here for around nine years by way of Utah, born and raised, so if there's any Utahns out there. And a little bit about me, so I started my journey in group fitness. So I've been doing group fit for about 13 years now, so straight out of high school. And I was proudly a trainer for Les Mills. So I worked for them as an international trainer and presenter for around about almost eight years. So it was eight years. And yes, so on top of that, I have also done, have quite a background in personal training along the journey did a lot with group training, and my heart is all about the group. Like, that is where I thrive. Yeah. That's where I love empowering and encouraging people. And really, like, that's where I feel like my skill set is too, is like working with a big group of people to help them move safely, effectively, and motivate at the same time. So I've had the pleasure of teaching to classes of 1,000 plus down to three people. So... As, two. As long as it's yeah. a group, I'm all about it. Uh, that's Amazing. a little bit about, about me. Um, oh, awesome. <laughs> and I definitely got to be around your energy, and I can see how that would affect, like, so many people in a group setting. Cause, and I love that, like, you, how you show up on social media is super consistent with who you are in person as oh, well. Like, you. you wanting to support other people and being high energy and all of that, like, it definitely showed up when I got to meet you in person, and so that was super fun. Oh, um, little background on me. So I grew up, did gymnastics for nine years, retired at 16, <laughs> um, and then I went on to do dance and track and, and then went on to study kinesiology in, in college because that's what I loved. I loved the study of human movement. So I was like, well, might as well do this. <laughs> and then through that, I actually started teaching Pilates. So in undergrad, I started teaching Pilates uh, at a gymnastics gym. And then that translated into a chiropractic office where I also got to work on reformers and all that kind of stuff. And then went into grad school, got my doctor of physical therapy degree. Mm -hmm. And even while I was, I mean, I'm like so obsessed with continuing to learn about the body. So even when I was getting my prereqs to go to graduate school, I had like 
a couple more prereqs I had to take. So I kept doing biomechanics classes at my undergrad. And I was with like grad students in ATC and grad students in biomechanics just because I, first of all, I loved my, and my professor. He was absolutely amazing in having conversations around the body, not just like teaching. Mm -hmm. And so it made it so applicable, easy to understand. And then went on, got my doctor of physical therapy degree, continued to teach Pilates when I was in grad school, and then just continue to learn. Like we even created a group within grad school where every lunch we would go do some kind of new workout. So whether it was running or sprinting or lifting or whatever, we all kind of taught each other. So it was so, it was just so amazing to continue the journey to not only learn about the body, but also apply that to the body. And so competed in calisthenics, um, got introduced to Afro yoga and was like, Oh, I can do handstands on people's hands now. <laughs> and then like through that journey, I've just continued to learn from other people. I have a good friend that does animal flow and kettlebells. And I just continue to love to explore the body and show people what is possible within the body mm -hmm. when we truly like give into our full capability of what our, what our body can achieve. It's, it's limitless. Like mm. seriously. Mm, you got me hyped up. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I love your, you have, you're brilliant. And I haven't known you for that long, but just your brilliance and your knowledge and how you say things with such care and in an easy way for people to understand. Yeah. And it's really, it comes off so genuine. So yeah, in my little bit of time of getting to know you and following you on social media, like the way that you show up, it is just this learning mindset and making it fun for people and then really inspirational as well. I feel like we're supposed to be like, I know we're supposed each to be other. doing this right now. I don't know if we're going to be great at like, <laughs> join my team over your team. <laughs> but I mean, the brilliant thing is that people can join both teams and I hope that people get to be able to experience a bit of what you do, a bit of what I do. I think that would be the ultimate is like mm -hmm. really being able to dive into two different people and perspectives and mindsets and learning. And that's, that's my whole thing is like, I want to learn from other people. And obviously, you know, we each want people in our journeys because I know you probably created an amazing 90 day program. We'll go into exactly what that is. And I feel like I did too, <laughs> so I know we're going to want people in both of ours, but at the same time, like, I really want to encourage people, if you have the resources and the opportunity to be able to dive into both, like, take the opportunity because learning and expanding your awareness mm -hmm. of what other people have to say about the body is how you learn about your own body. Mm. Mm. Preach. <laughs> Preach. Okay. <laughs> so let's go into it, like, what equipment would people need for your 90 day program? Like what is the main concept you want people to walk away with? Mm -hmm. So the program that I created, it's called Elevate. So it's E-L-E-V-8, all based around a concept of its strength workouts. So every workout is, we have in the program, five workouts a week, and there'll be three strength workouts within there. Each strength workout is comprised of eight exercises. A lot of them are super sets. So that's a big thing mm -hmm. that I bring into a lot of the workouts and then mindfully put the moves together in a way that's progressive as well, because it's a four phase program. So starting off building our baseline and then gradually adding different challenges and different ways to train into the strength and function of the body. So that is the strength component. And then we also have, I have they're optional, but recommended HIIT workouts. And so people can either opt to do steady state cardio on their own. Let's say if they're beginners yeah. and that HIIT training, um, doing too much jumping, like it, being mindful, right? Mm -hmm. So I have fantastic HIIT workouts that I've programmed and those would be two a week. So the cool thing is, is that you'll get nine strength workouts over the four phase program and six HIIT workouts. I am big on consistency, like switching things up every second time you do a workout, you're left just trying to figure out what the hell is going on versus being able to know the name of the workout. Every workout will have a name and then being able to just mindfully like, be able to remember it's eight exercises 
and then what falls within that. And then every workout, so eight exercises, there's always two, activate, and then four exercises that are isolate and integrate, strength mm -hmm. and hit. So it's the same format. Mm -hmm. Then we finish everything, so the strength workout with a dominate challenge, which basically is a com like comprising all of what we did in the workout before into some type of, a, let's say, an AMRAP or a ladder, mm -hmm. something to challenge them, and then another core exercise at the end. So that format is the same for strength and hit. Obviously, the objective of what we're trying to achieve, strength, function, effectiveness in the strength workouts, and then cardio, 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 and body weight training mm -hmm. in the hit workouts, but they still follow that same flow. Yeah. Amazing. That's yeah. awesome. Thanks. And yeah, I know cool. you were adding like some mindset tools and stuff like that as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So thanks for bringing in that. that <laughs> this is the. I this, just remember the, you mentioning that. Yeah, this is the part that I'm super passionate about. And when I got approached with the the opportunity, I went into it and I said, "Hey, I really want to bring in some coaching." So I have a background in coaching and bringing in, especially mindset coaching. Mm -hmm. And as, when we talk about goals, like, well, why do we pick the goals that we do? Like, where does that actually come from? What's the importance? What's the meaning? Really getting to the root cause and then building our goals sometimes backwards. Because sometimes we just jump into things thinking we know when we really might need to look at it with a different perspective. So that's what I'm excited to do is challenge the mind, right? Like challenge the mind, the way you think and the perspective you have and that will tie into, that's called the work in. Mm -hmm. The work in is all about coaching. And then that goes along with the four phases of the program. There's a different topic for each four phase. And then that goes with the workout, yeah. which is what I just explained, which I'm so passionate about. Like I'm geeking out about it. That's <laughs> so. amazing. What equipment would people need for your program? Yeah. So for the strength and hit workouts, it's, couple a handful of sets of dumbbells so you can do this basically in your home if you have the basic equipment so some resistance bands super easy kettlebells dumbbells a adjustable bench preferred but also can do without it and then the hit workouts are majority cardio and body weight mm -hmm. so that's basically it as yeah. far as equipment goes keeping it simple that's the best way to do it because I know a lot of people are probably going to want to do this in their home. And I know like even for my sister, she wakes up at 4.30 in the morning to get her workout in at home before her yeah. kids wake up and then she's got to take them to school and go to work and do all the things. So it's like, that's her time. And so I always try to think of that mindset too, of like a mom who has kids and full-time job and taking care of everyone. Like how could I make it accessible for her mm -hmm. to understand and be able to use. And so mm -hmm. I love that you kind of integrate that as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think very similar equipment for both. Um, so for mine, um, the whole concept, I love that you bring in mindset work because I do as well. That is mm -hmm. everything that I do in person. And it's hard to translate that on Instagram because <laughs> it's not always the sexiest to, to see is what's really going on within the mind and how we can integrate that into the body. But it is so 100% connected. And if we're neglecting how we're addressing something or how we're thinking about pain and the body and all these different things, then we're not really going in to address what we're feeling, address how that's working, address how your body is responding to things, mm. unless we're getting clear on the back end with our mind. So that's why I think it's so important to integrate that and have that really understood of how that connection starts to um, integrate. So I actually start my breath work all the time. Hold on. Babe! <laughs> making all this noise back there. Um, oh, I thought you were going to bring on a guest star. <laughs> not, not yet. Um, but so we always, so ugh, where was I even going? <laughs> so within my program, within work. mindset, yes, I started at breath work. And I started at breath work because it is the number one way to actually understand what's happening within our nervous system and to realize that we can change 
our state within our nervous system to actually improve mobility and improve strength, or we can hinder it based on the state that we're going into. So really easy concept around how to use the breath in order to manipulate the two. And then we go into, okay, now let's see how that's actually integrating into, I, I do integrate mobility work every single week, or not every week, every two weeks, it's going to change up the mobility that we're doing within their body as a warm up and a cool down um, and a flow so that you're always continuing to move and understand how this incorporates, whether it's passive and active. So obviously a warm up wouldn't be as passive, but a cool down would have a little bit more passive to increase range of motion. So understanding that we're building on our baseline in order to build into strength and progress in a safe and effective manner. And that's the number one thing that I'm always harping on is that, yes, we want to check form. We want to do cueing. We want to understand how we're moving and why we're moving that way. But we cannot neglect our foundation. And our foundation is what we're building upon to progress well, to increase, to avoid injury, to, you know, all those things. So I always start with some mobility within it. We have core workouts that progress all throughout the 90 days as well, because, Core, again, starts from our breath, and unless we understand how to use that, we're not really understanding how the whole system of the core, which is our whole trunk, <laughs> really works together. You know, it's not just our six-pack, but it's, it's so much more. So really integrating all of that together and building off of our foundation so that we can build strong, functional humans. Like, I wanted my tests to be, did your range of motion increase? Did you decrease pain or constant aches that come up within your body? Like, have you connected more with the awareness of what's happening in your body? And really, within a 90-day program, like, that's a, that's, that's a long time to be consistent. So if you actually maintain the consistency within a whole 90 day program, you should be able to feel a huge, huge difference within the body. And we build from isometric strength all the way up to single leg stability and what that looks like and feels like within the body when we're doing strength training. And just like you, I wanted to do a TRX within the program, but I'm gonna take that out. Reframe. <laughs> Pull back. <laughs> yeah, pulling back so that it's not too much equipment. Um, yeah. But, but definitely bands, resistance bands, things that you can just like put up in your doorway as well or put up on a bar. Um, dumbbells, kettlebells. If you don't have access to kettlebells, you can use dumbbells. Um, and then just, you know, equipment that you can use at home. So I like to use like instead of a bench, can you use an ottoman? Can you mm -hmm. use your couch? Can you use different things? So yeah. how could we get creative within our space as well to be able to do it anywhere? Nice. Yeah. Nice. I love how passionate you talk about, especially the the warm up, but also the cool down. And you know, from being in a background of group fitness, you know, a lot of times it is. It's like you go in, and people are so used to getting right into the workout, smashing the workout. It's like you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But I preach to the classes that I teach. I teach at Chicago Athletic Clubs and the classes always see me and I'm welcoming them out to do an extended warm up outside of the studio because we are limited on time. Yeah. And then also hitting the turf and I give exercises, have a whole group of people stretching out there yeah. together and just the real importance because there is this stigma. How many times people have come up to me when I'm helping people or myself do what you're talking about and they come up and say, oh, are you injured? Mm. I'm like, absolutely not. No, I'm actually doing this to prevent. Like, mm. this is why I'm able to continue to keep doing what I'm doing in a safe and effective way. Yeah. So kudos to That's, you. My well, friend. kudos to you and to be able to be the person out there who's showing it and demonstrating it and living in it. Like, that's mm -hmm. what I always say, even if like, you're the person at work who gets out of your desk and is doing these weird exercises and stretches, or you're the person who's at the airport while you're waiting and you're doing stretches, like be that person, be the person that people are looking at weird because you get to start to make them think differently and affect change. And oh. we're, we're our environment. And so I so appreciate like the environment I grew up in, my mom worked out all the time. I would remember riding my bike when she would be running with me 
or like I even when we were really young, she would stick us in like the sandbox and she would go run the track around us. Like, right. you know, activity and movement was just a part of life. And that's how I've grown up. And I'm mm -hmm. blessed to have grown up in that environment. And you get mm -hmm. to know that you are directly affecting your environment by what you do. So like, mm -hmm. join the challenge, learn from people that really have been honing in on their craft and doing it for a long time. It's going to feel so great in the body if you actually do. And I know that we each have codes. So yep. my code is DocGen20. Your code is Nikki Snow, Snow 20. 20. Yeah. 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 So super easy to know and to remember. Um, we'll have, we'll, we'll both link up the pages, I'm okay. sure. Nikki will link up the page. I will link up the page in, um, in my link in the bio and in my story. So you guys will have access to go click the link um i think it's just a little over 100 right i believe so i believe it was 119 yeah which that's for both i think that's for both which is nothing i hope we're not saying this wrong <laughs> i don't well when i went to look at it that said that it came with it both it like wasn't that. I believe so. I know. I hope we're not saying it wrong, too. <laughs> we just got all this information today. <laughs> um, but so like if 90 day program Seriously. for a little over 100, plus we're providing recipes. So we didn't even talk about our nutritional about insights. <laughs> like 40 recipes is a lot, which I know, Nikki, your partner and my partner both are incredible chefs. Yes, we had a good time talking about this. We were talking about the fact that uh, your partner and my wife, like, my wife is an incredible chef. Like, <laughs> y'all, it's, it's real great. So the it's rest of us are literally coming from both of our kitchens, <laughs> where we influence the yeah. recipes and we help. Yeah, we moral help. support is so right. important. I'm a great cheerleader and I'm a great taste tester. Me too. I really enjoy eating a lot. <laughs> so with that, I, about like your philosophy around nutrition and bringing yeah. the into the 90 day challenge, what, what does that look like for you? You know, for me, it's really about adding in, not in rather than let's get out of the concept of what are we taking out? What are we preventing? What do we need to avoid? But how can I add in more nutritionist things or how can I add in more greens? How can mm -hmm. I add in more veggies and see how that makes me feel? Like mm -hmm. listen to your body. I always say like we listen to people in conversation and we say, hey, you're worth listening to. But we don't do that enough for our body and say, hey, you're mm -hmm. worth listening to. Like how am I truly feeling? Am I feeling full? Am I, am I feeling hungry right now or am I bored? So if I'm bored, could I maybe have a glass of water instead? Can I maybe snack on some nuts instead rather than having a meal out of nowhere, you know? So how could I start to intuitively start to be m more mindful about what I'm eating? Mm -hmm. And I also like to draw in just like, just like I was talking about before, the state in which we work out, it's the state in which we digest in as well. And one of my good friends, Julia Glan, she's a registered dietitian, and I love that she uses this uh, phrase that you're not what you eat, you're what you absorb. So mm. if you are not in a state where you're calm, everything is like you're in a parasympathetic state, you don't have a screen in front of you, mm. even when we, when we narrow our gaze, we're in a more sympathetic state. But if we go into a gaze of a, like a panoramic view, like looking yeah. at the sunset, we're in a more uh, parasympathetic state. Did I say mm -hmm. that right? Sympathetic state, yep. re like, you know, everything Zoom is in. like high and, and mm -hmm. intense and we want to fight, fight, freeze when we're more in this narrow uh, gaze. Wow, I can't talk anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Versus the pair, like the panoramic view. Like think about it. Oh. You don't go look at a sunset and you're like upset. Usually. Right. <laughs> so it's the same thing when well, we eat. Like, some people might be. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Uh, we don't know. really digest. We have to get into that rest, relax, digest state. We have to put mm -hmm. our minds into a parasympathetic state rather than just shoveling food in our mouth and not really being aware of what we're even putting in our body, not being aware of where it came, not being aware. Like, so how can I continue to increase my awareness? And I wear awareness around my wrist because it's 
near and dear is everything. Like, how can I be more aware of everything? My actions, mm -hmm. my body, my movements, my food. Yeah. Like, how can I just increase my awareness and then add things in so that I'm not having to restrict. I'm not having to avoid. I'm not beating myself up if mm. I have something. It's like, okay, I'm going to have a cookie. Now, how can I add in um, a better meal? So the meals that we provide, we have 10 breakfast, 10 lunch, 10 dinner, 10 snacks. And uh, so this is your opportunity to add amazing things. And like, even if you go look at my boyfriend's page, Dr. Dom DPT, his recipes, his food. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Amazing. Shameless plug. <laughs> I think I just saw my wife too. She like put a note on here, like, you help a lot in the kitchen. I was like, that's being kind. She's that is so real. sweet. She's being real sweet. <laughs> I love that. And then someone mentioned something about the early bird pricing. They said it was 119. We were right. Amazing. For yeah. both programs. That's literally nothing. People. It's nothing. Yeah. I wow. mean, think of what you spend in a month. You do the whole Starbucks. Yeah. I, coffees. <laughs> I mean, just going to see me for an evaluation is 275 Dang. You know, doing a coaching session with me one-on-one, -on -one, you're looking at 250 an hour. So there you go, people. <laughs> 119 for both programs. It's kind of crazy. All right. Well, let's go into your uh, nutritional philosophy. Yeah. So... And so I'm not a nutritionist, although I've worked with a lot of dietitians, a lot of nutritionists, and the personality that I have and relationship I have with food is the rebel. I'm, I'm the rebel, like the rebel anytime, knock, like literally every time I did a, some type of a cleanse or a diet or, you know, I did it from a young age, right? And it was... It had to do with it. I'm tying it into the mindset, you know, is the mindset in the coaching. And I would do these things because that's what I felt like I needed to do to fit in mm. to the fitness community. And that's over time. I would just, I would do it. I would commit. I'd buy the tilapia. I would do the thing and I would get into it. And I was so unhappy. Mm. And then I would cave. So then shame would set mm -hmm. in. Shame would come knocking on my door and say, Nikki, you're, you're a failure. I, you, and then it, that would attach to my body issues, yeah. like what my body looked like, my weight, my self-worth, like all of that was this cyclical cycle that just kept going. So then, Ooh, another diet, I try it on. And then here we go again. And so for myself, it was really recognizing, recognizing that Having a plan wasn't, wasn't it. It was more about tapping into the fact that what was really the rebel in me, like what was that saying? And then tapping into that, zooming out from the diet and going, okay, what is your actual relationship with yourself mm -hmm. like? And what is your relationship with nutrition? And that brought up some really, really ugly stuff. And over time, just like really working to build up that relationship with myself and then eating food that fuels my purpose. So my purpose is to live a life with an abundance of energy, like with energy, vitality, power, and joy. And then looking at creating like eating food that does all of those things. Mm -hmm. So if I look at something like joy, well, if I'm eating, like eating clean whole food, like absolutely like my jam, my wife, like she cooks real clean, healthy, yummy food that helps me have the energy, vitality, and strength. And then there's joy. And sometimes, let's be honest, eating lentils and carrots, I don't know, I'm just bringing up something, like <laughs> I don't, Definitely it, the it, doesn't bring, it doesn't bring me joy, <laughs> yeah. right? Like all the time. Yeah. So then really looking at it and going, you know what? I do love to go. I live in Chicago. It's like the food capital, one of them in the U.S. Mm -hmm. We do love to go out to eat and going out to eat and eating thing, food and not feeling shame yeah. about it and being in the moment. I love when you said looking at the sunset. 
So to me, it's like looking at the table, like I'm at my kitchen table right now and with friends and family and we're enjoying, we're laughing, we're eating, we're enjoying each other's company. And then when I look at the food that gives me the energy, the strength, the vitality, the power to like rock in with my fitness, yes, that looks a, a bit different, mm -hmm. right? Uh, they are both so important. So important. So that's where I'm coming at it from is more yeah. really looking at the mindset and the relationship yeah. that you have with food. Because honestly, if, if it feels good for you, it's, I'm not saying that a meal plan or a cleanse, that those things are incorrect or following a nutrition plan. Like there's so much power that comes from those. It's just really tapping into like, what is your, what is the real purpose behind why you're doing what you're doing? Totally. Coming back to the why is everything. Totally. Yeah. Mm. And that's where, like, you reminded me just, like, sharing your, your journey and your story. Um, mine really came in. I didn't know how to listen to my body. Mm. So growing up as a gymnast, I could literally eat whatever I wanted. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand what love handles were, what, like, I just, I didn't. We worked out, like, insane hours <laughs> for gymnastics, and I just... I could eat whatever I wanted. And then, mm. but I grew up with horrible stomach aches, mm. horrible stomach aches. And I would have to have gas X with me, Tums with me, just like, I would have to carry this around with me. I remember we would go out to dinner and I'd have to lay in the booth with my family while my stomach mm. relaxed before I could sit up and start eating again. And mm. for me, I took that as, I just have a bad stomach. And I take gas X because I have a bad stomach and genetically this is just what's been brought to me. Mm. And I didn't know it was the food that I was eating. I had no idea how to listen. All I knew how to do was mask, which is the majority of what we're taught in this society. Like you have this pain, take this pill. You have mm. this bloating, this digestion, take this pill. Take this pill. And that's what mm -hmm. I had grown up around. And then in college or in, in grad school, yeah, it was when I was in grad school, I got stomach aches so incredibly bad. I couldn't, like, I was not going to class. I couldn't mm -hmm. barely stand. I couldn't eat for a week. Um, I mean, it was, it was awful. And it was like nothing I've ever experienced. I had to go to the hospital three times to be mm -hmm. put on morphine to make the pain like oh my God. pass. At oh. first they thought it was appendicitis. Turns out it wasn't that. Then they thought it was just, they told me IBS, which thank you for confirming that I have an irritable bowel, but why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, like irritable bowel syndrome doesn't tell you the root cause. It just confirms the symptom, which is a lot of diagnoses. They just confirm the symptom. They don't tell you the root cause. Mm. And yeah, I'm in grad school, I'm competing, I'm doing other things, but I was like, I am not stressed. I'm going down to Venice Beach, I'm playing with friends, I'm enjoying life. Like, I, I get that it can sound stress, but I'm not. So I was not okay with that diagnosis. And then mm -hmm. after the third time of going to the hospital, my dad was like, you're doing the colonoscopy. And I was like, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to at all. Finally did the colonoscopy and it turns out I had a twist in my colon in three different places. So I could literally, like they partially knocked me out, but not fully. Mm -hmm. So I could remember myself crying. Mm -hmm. I could remember them going through the twist and the nurse having to push on my stomach as he went through. And I just, I remember how awful it was. And it was that mm -hmm. moment after that I started to actually learn that how you're feeling when you eat and mm. how you feel after you eat is directly related to what you're eating and the environment mm. that you're creating. So if mm. I'm in a stressed environment, if I'm beating up my body based on what I'm trying to eat, if I'm taking in foods that just my body is more sensitive to, and I mm. get to listen to that and be appreciative yeah. of that and say, okay, thank you for telling me. And now I get to shift that. And maybe mm. it's not going to be perfect every time, but I understand that when I listen to how I can, just like you, better fuel my body, mm -hmm. I can actually get myself out of pain myself <laughs> without drugs, without doctors, without anything else. 
And so it was such a crazy experience to have to learn about food that way. Mm -hmm. But also I'm extremely blessed that I went through that experience to start to really learn how to listen to my body rather than mm -hmm. how to mask what my body was saying. Mm. Wow. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Just like, sometimes we learn from, we learn the hard way. Yeah. Right. And that's, it's, e you know, for everybody listening to, it's like, I don't have a perfect relationship with food. It's like, cause it's always evolving, oh. right? It's always evolving and having grace with yourself mm -hmm. and kindness with yourself. And, you know, like that, and knowing that over time, like, just getting to the root of it and you mm -hmm. starting to get more intuitive and like figure yeah. it out. Then instead of repeating the same cycle again, it's like you actually have the choice, yes. right? You have the choice to start to shift things. And that's what I would put out to you is just looking at things to be open to trying, mm -hmm. you know, like I tried a lot of different stuff and I believe that my philosophy or where I'm coming from, from nutrition is based off of a lot of, hard experiences so my wish is that more people can get there faster without having to go through so like that cycle for their entire life exactly right? exactly oh. mm -hmm. and if you just open yourself up to learning from other people and seeing how other people do it you don't have to hit rock bottom in order to learn mm -hmm. i really believe that if we take in the opportunities and the lessons of what other people are telling us the the expertise that other people are telling us and we, and we just try it out, you know, be open to really trying it out, be open to really diving in and seeing how that feels. Mm. Like there's so much that you can learn through Absolutely. that experience. Yeah. And in, in resistance, resistance, if it feels like, uh, yeah, there's a lot that you can actually uncover about why we resist things, resist listening to certain people, you know, it's like, actually looking at it and going instead of no that's not for me well like what is it about it that's really not for you and what is it that causes us to put ourselves in these certain boxes mm -hmm. right and just being open to growth and open to learning so powerful so key yeah, yeah. so much um well, what else we got here what else <laughs> um i have it next to me here <laughs> I think we went over a lot of it. Yeah, I feel like you we know, covered a good chunk of it. We did. Have there been any questions at yeah, all? Yeah, are there any questions? <laughs> if not, like, I just want to see. So there are opportunities to win prizes. If you guys do yeah, the challenge. Yeah, great prizes. Um, we have, I mean, the grand prize. Should we start prize. with the first one, or should we go? Like, no, let's start with the other To me, ones. though, here's my thing, is I was like, when we announced this, it, I was equally psyched, honestly, for all of them. Yeah. Because the cool thing is, is that some people are going to be like, yeah, the, that grand prize is my bag. Right. And I'm excited for everybody. And yeah. the ones for you to come up with your own, like we talked about goals and what you want to come and conquering those things. So, yeah, well, one of them is biggest transformation. I like this one. Biggest team player and motivator. Love that one. Love it. What's the next one? Um, best masters athlete over 40. Yeah. Woo! We've got fittest mom. And, and you're not a mom, are you? I'm not a mom. I'm a, a mom. I'm a really great auntie. Me too. I'm a, prof a professional auntie. Oh, I love being an aunt. <laughs> Maybe we should have fittest mom slash auntie. <laughs> <laughs> We have a lot of people in there probably then. Does pet mom count? Because <laughs> I know there's a lot of people out there with pets as well. <laughs> and then should we give a drum roll with the top prize? <laughs> what is it? It is the cover. I freaking yeah, a cover, cover on it. oxygen. What is it? Of the winter 2020 issue of oxygen. Mm. Mm. <laughs> It's Just so you know, amazing. I really like to dance. Like, my background's actually in... Oh, yeah, you were dance. So I should just be like... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was watching you, like, hang upside down on those bars today. I was like, you know what? I'm going to learn how to do that. You inspired me. It's great. I used to Love be it. pretty, pretty 
rock solid at it. And so now I was like, you know what? Why don't I get to be rock solid at that again? Yeah. So right? bringing so it back. Cool. Gold. Yes. So, I mean, back to our, the, yeah. so lots of different prizes, <laughs> lots of different categories. And yeah, we're so excited to be on this journey with all of you. No matter which team that you join, I know I would love you on my team. I'm sure Jen, she equally seconds that. And then if you want to join both, I truly do feel, both of us feel that there's a lot that we get, but from both sides can yeah. benefit from each so of the much. programs. Yeah, so if you, if you have the means to be able to do it, I highly recommend you being able to do that. And even if you don't do both programs yeah, at the same time, like getting both of them, you have access to them, being able to do one or the other would be a great thing for you to jump in on. Totally. I mean, so yeah. the fact that this is early bird pricing, so it's just under over 100, which is insanely cheap. Uh, so being able to access both programs right now, get in and have these at your disposal for whatever you need to use them, like that is incredible. So Always team both. Oh, I love that. I love that too. <laughs> Pamela. Oh. Woo! Um, and if you guys have any more questions, drop into our DMs, mm -hmm. ask us. Um, we're both going to be sharing out the link so that you can sign up right after this. We're so incredibly excited. If you missed any of this, go back and watch live again. It's going to be up for 24 hours, and we cannot wait to get to know you better, to work out with you, to move with you, and to really do this, do this together. Heck yes. Somebody did ask, how long are the workouts on average? So I know for Elevate, for my program, the strength workouts are between 30 to 45 minutes, and the HIIT workouts are between 20 to 30 minutes. Yeah, my workouts are, are between the shortest hit workout that I have is about 16 minutes. And then the longest one that I have, but it's not till at the end of the program is 30 minutes because it gets a lot harder there. Strength workout should only take you between uh, 25 to 40 minutes. So sweet. And then somebody asked, when does it start? And it's May 4th. May the 4th be with you for all the Star Wars fans. <laughs> cool sweet do you have anything awesome. else um, no i think i think that's good we're going to continue to share about it talk about it express what you can expect within it and we're excited to be able to continue educating and getting you in your body absolutely get you in your body mm. Mm. <laughs> I, I feel like we're reliving what we did at the show <laughs> We didn't have any fun at all. <laughs> Not at all. Those photos were awful together. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks so much, Jen. For yeah, time. thanks for coming on. Yeah, I'm excited sure. to continue to talk about it and get the word out. And uh, you don't need gym access. Nope. Just as long as you have the equipment. Yeah. Space. A little bit of space would be helpful, but it can be modified as well. Yeah. Cool. All right, guys. Thank you so much All for right. being on. Again, watch it. And I will see you soon, Nikki. Okay. Thank you so much. Have Bye. a good night, everybody. Peace out.